Hey guys, what is up? Today we are in a 97, I believe, Subaru Legacy Wagon GT. As you can see, I am on the right side of the car, or the wrong side of the car, depending on how you look at things, but either way, it's another JDM car. Obviously, in Vancouver, we have the 15-year import rule, so unlike you guys down in the States, we can import anything as long as it's 15 years old. So that means we get R34 Skylines, we have S15 Silvias, and of course, awesome Subarus as well, which are very useful up here in the mountains and whatnot. So if you didn't know, with this twin turbo legacy, like the other one we featured last spring, it does have a sequential twin turbo setup. So in the lower end of the rev range, when you're just kind of putting around town, and having some fun, there's no lack of torque. So you have that small turbo that spools up really nice and fast between kind of 2,000 and 3,500 RPM. And then when you really get up into the rev range, kind of 4,500, right around five grand, all the way to 7,500 RPM, you've got that bigger turbo to provide power when you really want to go fast. So one thing that actually is awesome about Subarus of this era is generally in 90s cars you have to put a lot of steering input um, to get around any like decent corners but in the Subaru like this one it's very direct actually and when you're going around even in the twisties here you don't have to give it a lot of inputs which is awesome because then you're not wrapping around and you really can just focus on the road ahead uh, your cornering speed exiting going on throttle and all that kind of stuff which is really what you want to be doing. All right, so when you're inside the Legacy, I mean, it's a really comfortable car, but the thing is Subaru knows that people who are buying these cars religiously and who are quote unquote brand loyal, they want to drive their cars hard on the weekends, or at least most of them. They want a practical car that they can also have fun in, which means you get adequate amount of bolstering the seats are awesome the steering wheel stock momo steering wheel a little bit of wood grain on there too which is quite hilarious from the 90s but i mean the seat just holds you in everything's all about practicality so i mean the interior it's very accessible for both sides the passenger and the driver and i mean gauges are really simple 90s gauges pretty much and everything from nissan's toyota's subarus they all kind of look the same um, in the 90s and this is one of those cars where it's definitely at the bottom of its depreciation curve right so you can pick these up dirt cheap I don't think they're gonna get any cheaper um, they probably also won't go up at any time ever but still you're never gonna really lose your money on this if you keep it in decent condition this particular one has about 121,000 kilometers on it uh, which is just over 70,000 miles so for a 97 you know not bad. Hi, my name is Dustin. You might remember me from having my Honda Del Sol on the channel or about a year back now. Well, things change. And now I have a 1997 Subaru Legacy GT Twin Turbo. And it's a hell of a lot of fun. <laughs> Bought it off uh, the first owner in Canada who imported it and had literally done nothing to the car. So for me, it's a fresh slate. It allows me to do what I want to do on it and I can just sort of make it what I want it to be instead of trying to run off something that someone else had previously. I'm just glad to have something that I can make mine, not part of someone else's. My next plans or my general overall plans is really not that much, but to make it just stand out from an everyday soccer mom wagon, right? I'm gonna probably drop it maybe an inch just to sort of close up the wheel gap, uh, just to make the stance that much, a little bit more meatier, but still keeping to the hint of the Subaru and being able to go anywhere that I want to. But it's cool that Subaru put a completely different engine setup for this car. They didn't just go and stick the STI engine in it. This is a completely different, useful setup for this car. Um, having the twin turbos, it just makes it incredibly unique. And I feel like the group of people that owns these cars, um, I feel like it should be a kind of a tight-knit community almost, because very unique car and only a certain amount of people have that. Pulls hard for sure. 
this car already has an exhaust, but an intercooler, maybe a boost controller, even just a couple pounds of boost, um, just to wake the car up and kind of set it apart from the crowd would go a long way. But seriously, around the city, this car is plenty quick. Plenty of grip too. I believe these are like 215s all around, if I'm not mistaken, uh, which is a pretty skinny tire, but honestly, you've got four wheel drive and the weight's pretty balanced too, especially if you have a passenger or two in the back. So really doesn't present that much of an issue. That rumble though, that boxer rumble, there's really no other kind of engine that makes that sound. I mean, even Porsches with turbos make their own sound um, completely different than Subarus. And I think that's why certain Subarus have kind of like a cult-like following. And second turbo! Mmm, power. <laughs> So as far as looks go, um, Subarus kind of are a hit or miss depending on the year, depending on the model. Uh, newer Legacies, eh, not that great in my opinion. But this generation of Legacy, I think the front looks moderately aggressive, which is great. It's not trying to stand out like a like a New Edge Mustang or something like that and be crazy aggressive. Um, but it just has like a nice, intimidating feel about it without being too over the top. There's no real cars right now past the year 2000 that I really want to buy. Like just in the sense that cars that are older than 2000, I have a list of hundreds of cars that I would buy uh, right now. They're just, they're lighter, they're smaller. A lot of cool stuff was coming out of Japan in that era. And as you know from watching the channel, we love Japanese cars. So this is another one of those things that you can pick up for, I mean, less than five grand, depending on the mileage. And it's a great platform, seriously. Boost! Second turbo! Whoa! It picks up, it goes. Oh, that's fun. That is a lot of fun. <laughs> especially for a daily driver. Um, it's got all the good driving inputs and driving dynamics that you want out of a sports car, but it's in this package that just makes it super unassuming. And I mean, if you want a sleeper, you could definitely build a legacy twin turbo sleeper. That's not out of the question by any means. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Uh, go hit us up on Facebook. Check us out on Instagram, subscribe to the YouTube channel, go tell your friends, and we will be back very soon with another very interesting car that I think you guys will like. So, see you guys next time. After watching this video, if you want to see where I'm at with the car, you can follow me on Instagram at VUE underscore photography and there I'll post the progress pics of what I'm working on and also any of the other cool cars that I meet along the way and uh, all the professional photos that I do.